everyone, it's James. And Stephanie. We're coming to you today from the San Francisco Bay Area, and this rather unassuming office behind us is the headquarters of Pebble. Yes, Pebble is a brand new RV company, and this RV is not like anything else out there. Yeah, they're making a very innovative travel trailer with a number of features that, that are way out there and almost even like magical. Like, it apparently assists in its own propulsion. Right, it has regenerative braking to help you recharge your batteries. You can drive it around with like a remote control, like a little remote control tank, yeah. magic hitch, a whole bunch of stuff that I don't even know that I understand all yes. the way. So what we thought we'd do is we, we're going to give you a tour. Yeah. And, and when we're done with the tour, if you're like me, you've, you're going to have a lot of questions. And so then we're going to try to have a chat with the CTO and, and the founder and some, yeah. other, some other luminaries at the company who can enlighten us on some of these other features. Yep, we'll get into all sorts of technical stuff, so come on along with us and let's go check yeah. out the Pebble. It all starts with the tour, let's <laughs> go. And here it is, the Pebble Flow. That's right, it is a 25 foot all electric towable with a 45 kilowatt hour battery bank. That's more than twice the size of ours. Wow, and this is what it looks like when it's on the road, but this isn't <laughs> our footage. No, no, we took this footage from them because uh, we saw it in their lab, but we thought we'd show you something pretty first. This is our footage. Oh yeah, polished. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they spent a lot of time paying attention to aerodynamics on this, which, which I really appreciate it. You notice the whole thing is shaped. There's not square right, sidewalls. Right, there's nothing sticking up at all. It's very sleek. Yeah, and, and even the sidewalls, they're not just a flat panel. They're sort of rounded into a teardrop shape. That nose cone on the front is an active arrow feature. Like, it goes up when you're going to start towing to, to make things tow better, to provide less drag. And yes. It even comes down to, like, a teardrop shape sort of in the back. And that's all for aerodynamics? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Now, this is a pass-through storage compartment. It was full of instrumentation while we were there, so we can't show you what's in there, but it goes all the way through. Yes. Now, moving further down the, uh, I guess this would be the... Passenger side. Passenger side. I'm not used to reviewing trailers. That door was really wide, and check out that handle. It's automotive. Yeah, it's it doesn't stick out far. Right. For, so it's another paying attention to aero kind of detail. Unusual for an RV. Yeah. Even the hubcaps. That's oh. another aero detail. You know, like the wheels on my time trial bike? Yeah. I have a disc wheel. And those tires are actually bigger. They are, and that's to give it a little bit more off-road capability. You can roll over bigger obstacles that way. But it Good. is only single axle. We did ask them about towing in, in the interview, and we'll yes. get to that in a little right. bit later. Beyond that, though, there's not a whole lot sticking out right. on the side of the RV. Aero also comes into play on the top. You see there's a lot of solar. Yeah, what's that bar across the middle there? That is hiding, it's a wire chase. It's hiding all the wires from all the solar panels yeah. and it also makes it more aerodynamic. Ah, so, and it looks nice too. Yeah, it's really cool looking and it doesn't look junky, you know, like some right. RV roofs. And that's, kinda... a, that's a skylight there in the far back. Too. Yes. That's over the bed, but we'll get to that when you see the inside. Yeah, you will see that from the inside. You can't miss it really mm. when you're in the bed. Now. On the, I guess it would be the driver's side of the vehicle, this yeah. is their electric service panel. And there's only two things here. One, there's a, looks like a standard automotive connection. And we asked them about the charging capabilities. Yes. That's in the interview. We'll get to that. Mm -hmm. But you could charge it at an EV station or from home with a converter box. That is power output. Yeah, that's interesting. So if you wanted to power something at your home, you can do that from, from this. And right. it seems like a lot of EV vehicles are going that way. Yeah, like it's the handy. Ford Lightning. You can use it as a backup power source for your home. You've got a 45 kilowatt hour battery. Now, this compartment, <laughs> there, there's some plumbing something back there, but it wasn't open and available to us when we were there. We asked them about it. Yeah, so um, stay tuned for that. But interesting, there's no locks. How does that work? So it's central locking. And this is, this is like a smart trailer. So it's central locking is going to lock all the exterior compartments. So wow. you have to lock each one individually. All right, that is a super cool feature. Yeah. And this is the other side of that pass-through storage compartment. Now, up at the front, this they have a feature called Magic Hitch. And basically, if you get it close enough to your tow hitch, it will drive itself and drop down onto the hitch. Nice. All you'll have to do is hook up the safety chains and the umbilical there, and you should be good to go. We the, have seen some questions about that, if you can use aftermarket hitch and towing accessories yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. We did ask them, so stay tuned for that answer in the interview coming up. Yep. 
And now they have another feature like called Instacamp, where basically with one touch, like the, the aerodynamic shroud on the front goes down, the, uh, the leveling jacks there go down, and then even the stairs will come out, like just one button when you're ready to camp and everything is done. Watch out, here it comes, boom. <laughs> There so we don't go. stand too close when the steps are coming out. <laughs> and if the steps are out, that means we can go inside now. Yeah, so here we are going inside. And inside, it's a lot like the outside. It's very modern, minimalistic. Clean, um, kind of maybe a little yachty, but it'd be like a nice yeah. modern yacht. Yeah, you're not roughing it in a camper like this. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Now, one thing I noticed is that there's a lot of curves. Mm-hmm. And, and it's unlike a traditional trailer in that, you know, there's not straight walls. Right. Remember, all those walls are curved on the yeah, outside. Yeah. And they're similarly curved on the inside, and the, the shell is insulated. But design wise, that really adds a unique look to it, too. I know it's all functional for aerodynamics, but I love the way it looked inside. Well, it, probably, it also makes it more challenging to build the cabinetry. But anyway. I'm sure. <laughs> so now this is the bed. It's in the back, and that is a full, full up queen size bed. Right. So there and, you go. And there's that skylight we had seen from the outside. Now, this is your view when you wait. Well, maybe not a view of their shop lights <laughs> this is this is your view when you wake up yeah all right a little bit of storage off to the sides now remember this is a prototype so this might change for the once it goes to production right. but i do think they'll put some sort of storage there and yeah. same with with up above mm-hmm. now they they weren't totally settled, I got the impression, on the cabinet doors opening down, so they may instead of up, they right. may do something different when you might when it, see that change. Yeah. yeah, but a little storage, right a little storage there. there, and there's a spot on each side of the bed to charge. So there's an outlet here, and then there's an outlet over on the other side. And these are not just 120 volt outlets; they're also USB C. Nice. They're not looking backwards. Right. They're only going forward. <laughs> so USB C outlets on both sides. Yeah. There we go. Um, now, there's, again, there's more storage, I guess, over on this side of the bed. It's not a huge amount of storage, yeah. but there is storage there. And also notice the lighting there. They have a lot of accent lighting like that. Indirect lighting, right. I think. Now, Steph is doing, I guess, what we'd call their, their room flip feature. Basically, the queen bed is a Murphy bed. It folds up, and then you get this which is kind of a double desk. Right, it's super long desk and that whole white board on the back wall there. You can put push pins in there. You can even hang a monitor. Yeah, they that. said it was sturdy enough to mount a monitor, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And there's room there for two people to work side by side, although we would bicker. Oh no, one of us, yeah, <laughs> you can have that. I'll take the table at the front. <laughs> so we're, it's, we're okay to do the voiceover, but all right. day we'd, we'd, we'd start to- Sometimes we like our space. Yes, there you go, that's a nice way to say it. More storage here. Now, you couldn't see this storage because it was underneath the bed when the bed was down, but there is some storage there. And here's more of that accent lighting. This time we're down at the floor with it. Yeah, there were not a lot of direct lights, like just a a hole in the ceiling with a light bulb in it shining at you. It was a lot of this indirect stuff. Yeah, there's the two lights in the back by the skylight there, but otherwise the ceiling was real clean. There may be one in the bathroom, maybe. I don't remember. I'm sure, yeah. But yeah, not a lot of you're staring into a light bulb kind of thought here. Yeah. Um, now that compartment there, that storage compartment, it, we're told it will be storage. It was kind of locked up while we were there. But... Yeah, it was a little too narrow for a seat for long, but yeah, it's interesting. Now this is an interesting feature. You can leave a laptop, apparently, on the desk. That's not my laptop, <laughs> by the way. That's, that's someone else's laptop. But you can leave it on there as you lower the bed into bed mode and presumably it will still be there in the morning when you wake up. But that's just the thing. How many people would actually leave their laptop under the bed? We're I'd get, all addicted. I'd get hives right? I'd We're all addicted to our devices. That's an unplugging strategy, right? It's a, you, that's a you great idea. You have to unplug. You have to put, and then you can't even use your laptop until your partner is also waking up in the morning, right? I love that. <laughs> that's, there you go. <laughs> Getting back to nature. Courtesy of the pebble. Um, Ooh, the bathroom. This this glass wall was really interesting. The yeah. curve, notice the curve in it. Cur- and then the, the whole glass thing, we got something coming up and it's apparently my favorite feature and the favorite feature of any eight year old who plays with the coach, so I'm told. So there, there are switches for lights and, and the vent fan, but there's one, you see that one labeled window? Now the vent fan, yeah, yeah, that's a vent. Okay, great. The window one though, it's like, what do you call it? Smart glass? Yes. You can see it kind of coming in and out. See there, it's, it's, it's opaque. opaque. Or now it's translucent. There's right. somebody outside waving. Can you see? There. He's waving and goodbye. 
You can kind of get the shadows, but really you can't. You can't make tell. anything. Yeah, out. you can't make anything. You wouldn't know out. who it was. Right. Now there's a vent here. This is for their uh, heating and cooling system. So there's one on this side pointing this way, and there's one on the other end pointing towards the front of the coach. That's the HVAC. So there's not a big fan one <laughs> blowing at you. It's supposed to be very quiet. It was a mild day when we were there. And now we're coming into the bathroom. And I have to say, I was a bit apprehensive at first about a glass bathroom, <laughs> but. Boom. Smart glass. Oh, that's so fun. It is. Again, this is another place where like me and the eight-year-olds would just have fun all day. Just saying, it, 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 I can't describe how much fun it is. I just don't understand. How does that work? You know, I it's amazing. Yeah. I love that product. I don't know. It's super cool. Yeah. And I could literally, I could just play with it all day. But yeah. you don't want to see that. You will probably <laughs> want to see more of the other All right. Looking inside. Check out that light strip right under the cabinet. Like halfway down towards the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting detail there. The very modern. Is it lights in the mirror? Right. There's some on the ceiling. Yeah, and the mirror has rounded corners there. And then coming over into the shower, it's kind of a, it's fairly large, I think. And there's a, a seat, a bench. Right. And I think well, you can see it's got enough room for me to sit on. And for it, a 25 even. foot trailer to have a big dry bath like this, this is nice. It's yeah. impressive. And I like the the strip drain there on the on the floor. Mm -hmm. Now this is the sink again, very wide sink, and mm -hmm. you're getting a sense for the overall kind of design feel they were going for. A rain shower head there on the uh, on the shower. Yep. Again, it's very luxurious. You're not going to be roughing it with a bathroom like this. Yeah, and there's the bench seat. There we go. And that strip drain again. Yeah. Now the toilet is a macerating toilet, so your waste products let's say are sort of pulverized before they're shot into the combined gray and black tank yeah how interesting that was a very interesting choice on their part there's the controls for the uh, for the toilet very interesting choice um but a combined gray and black tank and uh again over here these are the controls for the the smart glass boom and since I did it once, I'm going to have to do it like 19 times. <laughs> and that's the vent. vent. Vent, and then the lights in the bathroom. And there were some direct lights in the ceiling as well as those lights on the cabinet and in the mirror. But mostly click the switch for the window <laughs> because it's fun. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the galley now. That countertop is was long. long for such a small RV. 25-foot RV. Now, this induction cooktop, dual burner for one thing. But this is the most interesting treatment I've seen for an induction cooktop. A lot of people have removable induction that you can take outside. This was that, but then you could also, it was part of the countertop. It was really clever. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen that before. If okay. I have to redo our galley again, I'm going to do I something like that. I was thinking like the that. same thing. We need that. <laughs> do something like that. Now, big deep sink, lots of space on the counter. And, uh, you know, again, oh. This is this is <laughs> probably my favorite feature in the galley. It's the food truck window. Right, right. Food <laughs> truck window. Sure. <laughs> so there's a large window. It opens awning style and it opens right to the galley and you can even... Oh, I like that. You yeah. could turn the faucet outside. How convenient. And you can still get water right. while you're outside. If you're cooking outside, I could see that yeah. using that. But mostly I just wanted to like order and I think I do here. I ordered two corn dogs. Mm, you you tried and uh, and a big milkshake, but I wasn't selling any corn dogs, so I gave you a salad instead. <laughs> as always, okay. Back inside, as you might expect, in a uh, sort of a premium travel trailer like this, we've got soft closed drawer slides. Yeah, big, so when they get close, yep, they pulled out all the way, and they were really big. And the knobs on those, they push in, you mm -hmm. know, and to to lock the doors when when you're underway. Little bit of mechanical space under there, and again, some of that may change for the in the final yeah. product. This is definitely a prototype we were looking at. Right. Now, further forward, there's quite a bit of space under here, under the sink. Maybe. I can do it. There we go. Well, I had <laughs> to get on the other sure. side to show Slow you. Sure. Anyway, there's the drain for the sink, uh, some venting, that white stuff for the HVAC, and a lot of storage space under yeah. there. Now, that what Steph's pointing to, that's to be a pull-out pantry. Right. It was under construction while we were taking the tour, but that's their plan. Yep. Now, more cabinets that open downward. One advantage of them opening downward, I think, is that if, if something were to fall out of the cabinet when you opened it, mm -hmm. then it wouldn't hit you. It would fall True. onto the door. But I have a feeling they'll end up changing that 
Yeah, and go with something that opens up. Now that is a vent fan that actually vents to the outside. Oh, and the microwave was interesting. It was also an air fryer, a convection microwave. Yeah, it was like four-way, six-way, 23-way. There was some large number of ways that you could use that, that microwave. Yeah. The refrigerator is all electric, of course, and it appeared to be like European. It was not a normal RV brand that we're used to seeing. Yeah, I like how it was just built in, too, that you could, didn't even really know it was a fridge there. It was just built into the cabinetry. Yeah, so sleek-looking fridge and seemed to have plenty of space for a trailer of this size. Now, this is the main storage area for the RV. There are one, two, three cabinets top to bottom, and they go back a long ways. Mm -hmm. And the top one has got a a bar in it. I gave him the suggestion of putting some pegs for shelves or something. Yeah, I think we would build in shelves to that for us. Yeah, and then this one, on the the one on the very bottom, I don't know, that might wind up being a litter box or shoe storage (laughs) or something like that. Or maybe like a pull-out tray there would be handy so you could get to the stuff in the back. But these were really deep. You can get a lot in those cabinets. And we have finally made it all the way to the front of the RV. Now, this is kind of a dinette slash second workstation slash bed. Yeah, I like the accent lighting along the ceiling and the window shape is interesting. The two little side windows. But you could definitely use this as a second work area. There is a plug up here so you could plug in a laptop or whatever, get your get your work on. And there's storage underneath the, the bench seats all the way around. And this one, I think... There's nothing in yeah, there. Yeah, that's great. That's no all No cables, you. nothing in the way. Yeah, no water lines, nothing. All you for storage. And there's also some on the other side, although that one's a little smaller just because of where it is. And again, but... notice the floor lighting too. Oh right yeah, there. the indirect lighting on the floor. Mm-hmm. There were a couple in the front. There were a couple of overhead lights I did notice. Yep. Now, the table drops down, and when that happens... This becomes another sleeping area, and I'm 5'9", 5'10", somewhere in there, and there's plenty of room for me up there. Well, you certainly could get a family of four in this RV comfortably. Two kids could sleep up here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the things I want to show you is when you're up here, it's actually quite a ways from the area in the back, right? Like if you were both trying to work, if Steph was trying to work back there at the workstation... There's quite a bit of separation there. You know, and really both workstations would be comfortable. I don't know which one I would prefer. Well, you'd get the one in the back because I couldn't use it until you woke up. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Okay, control panels. There's just kind of a light switch up here. And then this panel is actually the Pebble app. Now, they're still working on that. They'll be adding features. But everything you can do to the coach, you can do from that app. And I really like this detail. The pet dish slides out when you need it and slides away when you don't. That is a great feature. Mel would learn how to pull that out on his own, (laughs) I'm sure. And now here's the door. Again, a nice trendy looking European door. And that's going to kind of wrap up our tour. But we had questions about some of these features. And we figure you probably did too. So we got the crew from Pebble on a Zoom call and asked them some questions. Okay. Hey, everyone. We are here for uh, more more details. We've got Stefan and Bing Ray. Hopefully I got that right. You guys are with Pebble, and could you just kind of quickly for our viewers, like a little who you are, what do you do with the company, and uh, and so that we know kind of where the answers are coming from. Hi, James. I'm Bing Ray. I'm the founder and CEO of Pebble. Thanks for having me. Right on. And I'm Stefan. Uh, I'm the chief technology officer at Pebble. Now, we just got back from Europe, and I know over there, they've actually, Detlefs and some other companies in Europe have, have put out self-propelled trailers and, and taking them over the Alps and that kind of thing. But what's stopping them from bringing them to market right now is regulation. Like the regulation over in Europe hasn't caught up with that. So what does that, what does that look like? And how are we going to, how are we going to navigate the regulatory environment with the self-propelled trailer? Um, so trailer as it defined by NITA, which is the government body that governs all the national highway safety Mm-hmm. Uh, as a define right now is uh, with or without multi power. So a trailer like the Pebble Flow that has a multi power is already within the existing regulatory framework. Um, that said, what we're doing is that we have a team of talent that's from EV, from autonomous vehicle companies. We are bringing the same type of rigor when it comes to safety and really develop uh, this vehicle like a autonomous vehicle with a with a safety as one of our top priority there. We have a lot of sophisticated sensors and algorithms, a robotic algorithm built in so that 
uh, when the it's ever get into a corner situation, the system will fail gracefully. It will fail safely. Is that the kind of thing you're going to go out into the desert and test? Because I'd like to be there to test it. Because <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a whole lot of fun, actually, to go out yeah, and just yeah, cut the trailer yeah. loose. We'll give it a ring. <laughs> right on. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Now, related to the to the tow assist, and th- is there more than one battery bank or just the one? Like, because I'm thinking that if you've got, you know, a, if you use 30 kilowatt hours of power to assist in the towing, then that's 30 kilowatt hours. It's if you've only got one battery bank, that's going to not be available necessarily when you get to your destination. Now, if you're going someplace with hookups, Obviously, that doesn't matter so much. You plug in when you get there, everything's fine. But if you're going like boondocking and it was like a three hour tow to get to your your boondocking spot, what do you have the ability to to like, say, turn that off so that you're not actually can you explain how that might work? Yeah, so we are trying to strike the right balance here, you know, adding several batteries that add weight, add complexity. Mm-hmm. Um and the way we are thinking about this is uh, you are looking statistically the length of a uh, of a trip that you typically have mm-hmm. and also we adding features where you are able to set how much assist you would like from this battery right okay so in some cases you say look where i arrive i will have opportunity to charge and i would like to kind of maximize my range uh, of this reason or no i would like actually to to put some more energy into the battery Perhaps I'm just towing with a IC uh, uh, a vehicle with a truck, and I have the opportunity to put some more energy in the battery. So that will be available for our users to to select. Okay, and that's something you would just set. Could you set that? You know, you're thinking on the fly, or maybe like yes. at the beginning of a trip or TBD. So, so you will have access to all of these um, features uh, through our Pebble app. Okay. Uh, obviously, uh, it will be dependent on what mode you are in, right? When you are towing and you are on the road, there will be some things that are available to you versus when you are camping. But these are all through our uh, Pebble app. Okay. And so, just a quick correction here: mm-hmm. our battery capacity is forty-five kilowatt hour, not 30. forty-five. Okay. Yeah, I said thirty. I didn't. I didn't quite remember, but I said thirty just to throw out a number. But forty-five kilowatt hours, which is more than twice as large as our battery bank. And ours is huge. So yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, do you have kind of a, a side note from that multiple battery question? Do you have, I, I've seen a lot of these systems where they'll have like a smaller 12 volt system on board to like maybe to enable solar charging or something like that. Do you have like a, a smaller 12 volt battery on board or something like that? I'm just. Yes. I mean, we have um, uh, is used on board they need to have low voltage, so this 12 volt battery. So in case then the high voltage is not up yet, we need to maintain that power. So that is a, that is there. Okay. And what, what's the voltage of your, your main battery bank? The nominal voltage is like 400? Well, uh, 400 volts. Uh, can, right. we, can we say that? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's a proper <laughs> EV battery. <laughs> Woo! All right. Awesome. 400 volt battery. Okay. <laughs> Universal charging, right? So... I get it. We saw the we saw the ports on the side of the vehicle and it's got like, you know, a normal EV port. And the way you adapt that to an RV park or your home is with the same kind of box that like we have experience with that with our time yeah. with Winnebago's ERV2. Mm-hmm. Get the little Ford box, you put on the right kind of plug. Yeah. There you go. OK, that part I get. But what's like, how fast could you charge this thing? Is it like level three charger? Could you DC fast charge it if you wanted to? Yes, so we have um, provided the typical charging that you have available for an EV. So you will have fast charge, you will have level two and level one charging. So you can charge at home um, uh, and, you know, it will take obviously longer time, but it's in the comfort of your home. But on the road, if you have um, a fast charging available, um, then you can do that. It's a proper electric vehicle. Yeah, that's, that's that's really something. So then even like a long say like on a long cross country tow, if you could find some place where you could where you could fast charge it on the road, right. uh, getting a space that's big enough for those. Uh, the spaces in California that we saw were pretty small for the EVs, but 
if you could find a space that, where you could fit in the, the the EV or you could fit your the Pebble Flow in, you could right. actually charge it an EV charger and, and juice up like right before you went to your campsite or something. Okay, so options is what That's I right. I'm and, and all of our automation options uh, features make it so much easier because you can just use remote control to back it into our charging ah. stand. Right? Before it's it's not possible. Your trailer is always hooked up to your tow vehicle, right? And you have to get like go through a pull through uh, mm -hmm. EV charger, and those are far and in between, you know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. So you could just pull into like a crowded parking lot, which is pretty much all the EV charging stations we saw in California. You could just pull in, drop the trailer, and then drive the trailer around like a tank until you got it in there where you needed it. Exactly. I think exactly. it turn like with the wheels operating independently, it could turn almost in place. Mm -hmm. That's exactly back right. in. Nice. That's exactly okay. Right. I get it. So the magic hitch. Now that's one that, that we 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 didn't see. We've got some video of it and, and it looks really interesting. So my question there is like Tyler, uh, you know, the son, he's, he's got a trailer and he's got like stabilizer bars and like, you know, load equalizing hitches and all. How does the magic hitch work with all that? Or does it eliminate the need for that kind of thing? I mean, if you've got a vehicle, I'm assuming you might be able to do some sort of like active steering, like crosswind assist kind of thing to keep it on track if it starts to get blown around. I'm what are the capabilities there and are all those tow accessories now obsolete? So there are two questions here. So first, let's talk about um, the magic hitch. So the magic hitch uh, has really nothing to do with the stabilizers and such. Okay. Uh, it will just find the hitch on your vehicle, uh, your hitch pole on the vehicle, and then it will just uh, approach it and automatically couple. Okay. Now... When we, we are talking about um, stabilizers and such, so we have done quite a lot of work on this. Um, we looked at the aerodynamics of the vehicle, so even side winds or crosswind, if you will, and looked at um, how well the vehicle itself, right, just the vehicle itself without any technology on, on top, uh, how well it handles those situations. The vehicle is really, really stable. But exactly like you said, we have this ability of applying torque. It's differential torque, really, um, on the two wheels. So we can do even stabilization. And this is this is one of the parts that that uh, can will could be very exciting because you are doing this where you really need it. You you do it at the trailer. Nice. So and and what are you what are you thinking? Is a just side question here is like the the minimum required vehicle to tow like a like an f-150 kind of thing or could you tow it with like something smaller yeah one of our goal uh at the very beginning of the design is that we want to make uh towing as easy as accessible as possible a lot of people they don't necessarily have a pickup truck right they're perfectly happy with their family suv we want to enable those consumers to be uh have access to this kind of experience so uh, Pebble Flow has a GVWR of 6,200 pounds. So yeah. any vehicle that has that level of towing capability will be able to tow the Pebble Flow effortlessly, not a problem. We're talking about pretty much all the pickup trucks and pretty much all the full-size SUVs. Okay, cool. That, that was interesting. All right. And um, EV as well, you know, no okay. more range anxiety when you tow one. Yeah. Okay, um, switching gears, I guess, um, the levelers we saw as part of like, you know, the one button push, you know, it deploys the levelers, deploys the steps, does the arrow yes, thing, all that. Um, so we've had automatic levelers for, for years and they don't necessarily always work exactly right. Like maybe one of them comes yeah. down on a rock or in a hole or something, you know. And so I guess for that and maybe really for any of the things that you're trying to automate, are you giving people a way to to cut that and say, eh, that didn't work. I need to take manual control of this particular process or that because, you know, the iPhone is great until it doesn't work exactly. And then and then, you know, then I, sometimes I wish for an Android. But anyway, um, are you giving people the ability to jump in and take manual control of some of these features? Yeah, absolutely. This was one of the discussions we had early on. And when we started 
designing the Pebble app, this was always in our mind. Yes, you will have the top level functions like Instacamp, you will have it accessible very easily. But then if you want to adjust of one reason or the other, any of your actuators, so the stabilizers, for instance, or the stairs or the awnings or whatnot, it also has to be very easy and intuitive for you to have access to those. So yes, the Pebble app is designed with all those considerations in mind. Okay, so there's like a easy mode and then there's like expert mode or whatever we want to call it, but there's a way to get to those other features and say, oh, I'm I'm two degrees out of level. I need to, okay. There's a more mode. We call it more. More mode. I like it. Oh, nice. I like it. It doesn't give the impression that you need to be an expert to use it. It's just more. Okay. Yeah. Um, besides the, the features that we've already talked about, like the hitch and the self-driving and all the are there, there's a whole lot to know because we do seminars for new RVers, right? And there's a whole lot of knowledge that can be kind of intimidating, you know, like, you know, when to fill with water, how to sanitize your RV tank, when to winterize, how to winterize. Are there plans to automate some of those features? Like I know winterization is one that trips a lot of people up. Are, are you planning on like some sort of one button winterize feature? Because that would be like dreamy for a lot of people, honestly. Anything like that planned or in the works? So this is another area that we're really looking into, right? I mean, we we started from every step of the RV journey and really look at how can we make this easier? How can we make simpler for a user? Uh, we're keenly aware of the pain points that people have uh, with, with when it comes to winterization, when it comes to plumbing, right? We're actively thinking about how we can make it better. Okay, so I would think at a minimum, you'd be able to do something like, you know, send an alert to my phone when the fresh water gets to 15% or something like that, right? Or when the gray tank is at 45 or 90% or whatever, you'd be able to at least alert. It's not going to dump itself, is it? Because that would be like a super home run, but it's not yeah. really going to dump itself. <laughs> as far as alert, yes. You know, uh, when it comes to more than that, again, those are the things that we're actually thinking about, right? We're not uh, uh, making any uh, announcements or uh, features with regard to features, right? Uh, we One thing I will mention is that uh, what you have seen, the Pebble Flow, uh, have a macerating toilet, right? Mm -hmm. We think that in itself will make the plumbing easier compared to uh, the gravi uh, gravitational toilet, you know, that's in the RV today. Right. Okay. Well, you can take that as a, as a feature suggestion, you know, call it magic dump or something. Well, don't call it magic <laughs> dump. Uh, <laughs> don't call it magic dump. Uh, this is why I'm not in marketing. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, speaking of the toilet, we didn't notice when we were there any way to to dump the pebble flow, and that was sort of like locked up. Are you are you able to to give us any more detail about what we didn't see? Yeah, so you had an access panel on one of the sides. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more towards the, under the vehicle right now. This is also something that we are looking into where to position it better. Um, so uh, you that's the reason why you haven't seen it, but yes, it exists. Okay. And is it is it going to be, I mean, I'm assuming you'll be able to dump in like standard RV dump stations. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what are, this is another question that's near and dear to, to our hearts, especially as we're coming into fall and winter. We love going out and camping in the winter. Why? Because there's hardly anyone there. You know, a lot of times you have the place to yourself, right? So... But that requires a lot. It requires a vehicle that's got the capability to do that. And it requires, or at least with a traditional RV, it requires you, the user, to have enough knowledge to know, okay, well, I can't do this in the winter, or I need to not use the sink or whatever. So what are the capabilities of the Pebble Flow when it comes to winter camping? Like so it, tank heaters. Tank heaters. Insulation would be, levels, mm -hmm. things like that. Or It would even be... Super. I mean, I can imagine all sorts of things you could do, like if, if you had exterior temperature sensors and you knew that, you know, once it gets down to 35 degrees outside, I need to turn on the water heater to make sure that the water lines aren't going to freeze kind of thing. 
what what are what have you got planned? I mean, I'm assuming you're going to have insulation and whatnot, but tell us what the capabilities are as far as winter camping. So there are quite a few things. Um, obviously, one of the most important um, components is that you have a good heater so that it's warm in the cabin. And um, ideally, it's also silent. As we are very much aware, um, you know, the furnaces typically come on come on during the middle during the night in the middle of the night and wake you up yeah. uh, several times. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing that we are actively looking looking at, and then it will be, I believe, a very 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 interesting and exciting uh, addition um, to our uh, pebble. Okay. And we talked we talked about heaters. Yes. So actually, these vehicles that you saw, they have tank heater. On, on board already. Good. Um, and we are actively looking into what else, um, what parts of of the uh, what pipes we we would want to to heat and isolate insulate um, um, additionally. So all those things we have in mind. Um, you talked about winterization, right? That's also a very important uh, um, a step and process in in the process. This is also something we are thinking about. So I, I think you will find that the Pebble Flow is a very capable RV for winter camping. And okay. the shower is fully insulated. That was like a custom form. It wasn't square walls, right? That That's was right. one of the things that I yeah, noticed. So you've got two layers of, of something and then insulation between them. Is That's it, right. It? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this upcoming winter, we plan to do more testing and really learn from that and make sure a customer have a good experience. Right. My first RV trip was actually in the winter. So I definitely learned that a few things. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's brave, taking your first trip in the winter. Like okay. you said, it's easy to book a site. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. And I guess the last question is one that, that so I love the direct con to consumer model, right? Which is, is you guys aren't planning on having like dealers and the traditional RV dealership network. And that's great. But the question everyone's going to have is, is what about service, right? Because I've been to a number of RV service departments and I can tell you they're probably not qualified to work on the Pebble Flow. So what sort of things are you doing to provide for service in the field? And again, I go back to the person in Biloxi, Mississippi, right? Something goes wrong. Are you making things modular? Are you making, yeah, how, are, how are you doing that so that people can get service without having to come back to California? Yeah, so we're well aware that uh, servicing your RV in itself is a really big pain point for a lot of RVers today, right? Absolutely. Um, so we as a new manufacturer, um, we are in the process of uh, figuring that out and how we deliver a better experience to consumer. Um, we, As we continue to go towards production uh, by end of next year, we will be announcing the details of how we're going to do that uh, at a later date. Um, that said, um, many EV companies in the last several years have done direct to consumer, have figured out a uh, a solution when it comes to servicing. So there already is an existing playbook, right? We're now trying to reinvent right. the wheel here. So we're going to learn from uh, other people's past experience. And in addition, uh, a lot of uh, a, a, a big uh, uh, goal for our the next iteration of the Pebble Flow when we continue to refine this vehicle is to make it more serviceable, right? So that will really help uh, when it comes overall servicing story. Yeah. Okay. And then, and another thing that I, I would I would add that's very different from any RVs out there today is that we have uh, ability to diagnose. So we have diagnostics on board, right? And since this vehicle gets over the air updates, so it gets things more, ah. we are able to deploy better and better diagnostics. And we're also able to um, kind of understand what is wrong uh, with the vehicle and what are the patterns. Okay. So that, so I could foresee something where someone says, Hey, I've got a problem. My water pump won't run or something like that. And then you do something on, on your end and you're able to say, okay, well, we've run a diagnostic on your rig and it seems that your such and such module is bad. 
you could like ship out a part to heaven forbid an RV dealer or something. And then they, but all they're trying to do is remove and replace a part, right? Just a, a unit that just got like connectors on the ends and you just put it back in place. I can see something like that would actually, you could work. And the fact that you're following, or you're going to follow the playbook from, from EV companies like here in town and we're not in a super huge town, but I know there's no Rivian dealer, but I've seen Rivian pickups on the yeah. road here. So they got to be getting service somehow. Mm -hmm. So there is a way to do it. So, okay, cool. Um, anything else you want to let us know that, that maybe has changed or any, any new announcements or anything? Not that I know that you have any or don't, but do you have any, anything you want to let us know since we were there? Uh, don't forget to place a fully refundable deposit and pre-order one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like it. I like it. Nice. Well, guys, it has been fantastic talking to you. I, I appreciate you taking the time to, to fill us in and we'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.